One of the most interesting projects Galvo lasers are capable of is etching 3D designs into metal. EasyCAD 2 devices were unable to achieve this in the past due to limitations of the EasyCAD 2 software, but with Lightburn we are able to create 3D etches from grayscale depth maps. In this video we will go through the process of achieving this. First we need to acquire a suitable 3D model or grayscale image. You can find models like this on many file sharing websites. Once you find a model you like, we will use a tool called STL to PNG to convert the 3D model into a 2D depth map. The output of this tool is a grayscale image with its tallest parts of the STL being white and the lowest being black. With the newly created PNG file, we can move over to Lightburn and the laser to prepare the job. It is important when starting to learn this technique that you have a recipe for quickly removing the base material with your laser. For this project, I'm using brass coins. When doing a project where you need to quickly remove material, lens selection and focus become even more important. Typically, you will want to select the shortest focal length lens that will comfortably fit your required work area. For this project, the coin I'm using is 40 millimeters in diameter, so I'm using my shortest focal length lens, F100, with a work area of about 70 millimeters by 70 millimeters. This is one of the highest power density lenses commonly available for fiber lasers, and therefore will ablate material the fastest. This lens also has a fairly narrow depth of field, around 3 millimeters. So we will need to focus slightly into the material as we will be removing one to two millimeters of depth into the coin. If you need more information on focusing your Galvo laser, you can check out the video on focusing linked below. To find a good starting point for our settings, we can use a website like fiberlasersettings.com and work from there, or run a power test with the material test tool in Lightburn. In my test, I found that these settings work the best for brass. To test the settings before we run, I recommend running a small filled rectangle with about 10 to 20 passes to be sure. I put these settings on the black layer. We will also need to run a cleaning pass to clean up any surface burn and brighten up the edge. These are usually very fast passes and about double the frequency of your material removal passes. I found the cleaning pass I like the best was with these settings, but again, yours will likely be different. To make things easier later, run your cleaning pass on the blue layer. You can also save both of these settings to a library entry once you have something you like. Once we are happy with the settings, we can bring in the PNG we created earlier. If the PNG is already in a shape you need, you can skip this step. But my PNG is a rectangle and much too large for the coin. Let's first make a circle on the T1 layer that is about the size of a coin. My coin's engravable area is 34 millimeters. Next, scale the image down to fit inside the circle using the scale handles at the corner. If we hold the command or control keys while scaling, it will scale from the center, making it easier to see the final size in comparison to the T1 circle. If we cannot see the T1 layer circle while scaling, Drag the image layer above all other layers in the cuts and layers window. This will make the layers below draw on top of the image. We can reorder them later if you want them to cut in a different order. Once the size is correct, select the image in the T1 layer circle to cut off the unwanted area of the image using the Apply Mask to Image tool. We can move the image around inside the mask to get the final position if needed. Next. Select the circle we made earlier and duplicate it with the duplicate tool. We will put this on the blue layer. This will be used for our cleaning pass at the end. Finally, select everything and group them so we don't lose alignment during the framing process. To start setting our cut settings, double click on the image layer to open up the cut settings editor. After filling in the settings we found for the material removal and the test at the start, Click on Image Mode and find 3D Sliced. This will slice our image into a specified number of layers based on the darkness of the image. For my brass coins and my 50 watt MOPA laser, I found that 250 to 300 passes result in a nice deep etch with very detailed results in brass, but your results may vary. Next, click on the blue layer to confirm our settings for the cleaning pass. Make sure the layer is set to fill and the settings match the settings that we found earlier. 
Once your settings are confirmed, all objects are grouped, and our layers are in the order we would like to run, image, then clean, highlight the work and click frame. For coins, I like to use the tool layers only option, so we can use the T1 circle to align the work to the engravable area of the coin. Nudge the work using the arrow keys or move the coin to align a red framing laser. Once aligned, go ahead and start the etching process. This is often a lengthy process taking two hours or more, depending on the power and size. We do not recommend leaving the laser alone during this process, so plan accordingly. Deep etches create a large amount of metallic dust, so be sure to have a good evacuation system. You should now have a better understanding of how the 3D sliced image mode works in Lightburn. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to not miss any new videos, and check out our existing tutorial playlist for additional guides on mastering Lightburn.